hello it's Chaz Large here with another video on how to fix things and this time on the bench we've got a very old uh, Pioneer Multiplay Compact Disc Player that's a model number PD-Z81M now I remember these from years ago being uh, quite problematic even fairly new uh, they were problematic mainly because of this beastie which is a, a multi-disc uh, cartridge and you can actually put six CDs into this um, and preload them by pulling the little uh, tray out, putting the disc in, popping it back, loading it in and the mechanism would load each disc and play them one after the other if you like or you've got a random button so you could literally play a random and they were sold a lot to um, uh, like cafes and um, uh, clubs, pubs and things where they would put a load of discs in and that would be the evening's worth of background music um, in the pub. Um, so uh, quite a few of these I remember years ago being <laughs> when they came in for repair being quite grotty and uh, covered in smoke residue and all that. They were awful things. Um, the mechanism was uh, actually quite complex as well and we'll have a look at that um, in a moment or two. But uh, basically uh, they worked when they were working they worked very well and uh, they were quite easy to service if you weren't scared of them. And a lot of people a lot of engineers I know used to look at these and think that is uh, a, something I don't want to get involved with. It's not a CD player, it's a multi-CD player I don't want to involve. So I, I used to get a lot of these to fix because nobody else would uh, as it happens. So anyway, I uh, just rested it on a little pot. Now I have uh, powered it up before and opened it up really just to double check that nothing was going to pop in it like a, a dried out capacitor or so on hence the fact that the, the lid is already uh, unscrewed but there's only uh, basically um, one two three four screws in the back that hold it on then it all slots in so we'll pop that over there and there we have uh, a wonderful mechanism so if we uh, go over to the overhead view we can see this mechanism and uh, basically what we've got is a tray we've got a CD um, mechanism here and everything's upside down from an ordinary CD player so actually when you put the disc in you have to make sure you put them in with the label side downwards and there's a big, label, big mechanism on there um, um, must admit, we did get quite a few where customers say it's not playing any discs and you open the tray and all their discs were label side up and said well that's the reason so you turn the label disc over and they would actually work fine but basically what you have is you put the mechanism uh, the, the cartridge in uh, then you've got a mechanism which will draw that cartridge into a certain position and then you've got another mechanism which will uh, load each tray, spin it out underneath the disc, uh, underneath the optics. Uh, the optics would then read it and uh, see if there's a disc. And then if it, if, there was, if it couldn't read the first disc, it would then put that back in and do it. So what we'll do is uh, we'll fire it up uh, and we'll pop the cartridge in. Like so, it just clicks into position. And uh, if we actually turn the power on, it would actually work a lot better. There we go. So the display is all working fine. Um, so you can see there that it just popped the first disc in. Then it drives the second disc. And the third disc. We've got a little optocoupler here which tells it which tray is uh, in process. We've got a motor here which is driving that mechanism. And this motor here which uh, ejects the cartridge. So this, mechanism, this motor here and this drive belt here is the one that does all the hard work and as if you watch this one when I press eject, it's the same mechanism. This is the one that uh, does the trays in and out. So we'll get that right. So we'll put that in, just wait for a second or so it should load or we'll try and load the disc. Press the front disc one. Okay, press play. Yeah, this is the one that raises the whole mechanism up and down. That's it. Now. Yeah. Okay. So usually if you press eject, it ejects the cartridge, presumably with this held in there, and um, the mechanism then rises back to the top because it always tries and looks at this one first. One of the problems that we used to get with this is the disc would sometimes just not quite sit properly in the tray 
but the customer would still ram it home like that and it, it wouldn't drop into uh, the right position um, so you end up with a disc jammed in there then they put that in then it would try and load it and the whole mechanism would just sit, sit there and say no I'm not going to do anything because it's all jammed up so quite often uh, just you had to tiggle the mechanism to get the trays back into here and the disc in and occasionally it would scratch a disc as well now uh, we've got a, a perfectly good disc uh, I know it's a perfectly good uh, with KT Melly were there and uh, we pop that in and it's not reading the disc and in fact you can look in if we have a look in down here let's just uh, stop that for a second okay and just bring the camera down to look at the mechanism just there and then I'll just focus it now uh, I'll take the disc out and I'll put it back in again but if you have a look at the disc when I put the disc in you'll see uh, and then press play on this one so the disc is in but the disc does not spin and that not spinning of the disc is actually quite a big clue uh, it's a big clue that uh, probably the fault that with this mechanism is to do with the optics uh, it's the, one of the first things that the CD has to do uh, when you load the disc in is to focus on the disc uh, it tries that first and if it can then see any reflection off the disc it then starts the spin motor from uh, the turntable motor from spinning um, so generally speaking a non-spinning disc is usually indicative of bad optics so what we will do uh, let's take uh, the camera back up there a minute So out there, I think, and focus. Now, what we will do is we will uh, actually take the optics out and check to see if we've got any laser light coming from it. Now, uh, as I seem to remember, these were quite easy to get apart. You've got four screws holding the the optical mechanism to the lifter. Uh, just got one little cable tie there, which we'll probably have to snip as well. So let's just undo these four. Gently, we should be able to lift the optical mechanism out and have a look. And I can see immediately the reason why it's not focusing, and that reason is the objective lens is missing. There should be a lens sitting in there, and it's actually missing. Now, chances are, if I quickly turn it back on again for a minute. Um, and put the tray back in we should probably see there is, there is a laser in there a, a laser light shining not see anything at the moment so let's just pop the, the cartridge in let's play right and you, I don't know if you can see quickly you probably you can just see there. You, know, you just see the laser light shining. So the laser's okay, but it's shining. Let's put it like that. But the reason it's not finding focus is because the objective lens has actually fallen out. Now I didn't hear anything rattling in here when I uh, first moved it, so it's quite possible that it is in here, but it could well be stuck to some. Uh, oil or something somewhere in the mechanism because uh, it's probably flown itself around it's plastic so that's all it will be is just sitting around there somewhere it may even be jammed wedged in somewhere so that's what we'll do we'll have a little look around see if we can find that and hopefully um, not really something I can film showing all that unless I have to take it all out but uh, I'll do that as and when necessary so for now I'll have a little pause uh, whilst I see if I can find this lens. Right, um, well I've taken the uh, cover off the 
uh, lens assembly just in case uh, the lens has somehow slipped inside here but nothing appears to be stuck in here basically what we've got here is two little magnets and a spring and uh, that's your tracking motor and uh, the vertical is the focusing motor and that's where the objective lens would sit and I've had a little look all around here and I can't see the objective lens having got stuck in any glue or wedged in any little corners or anything like that so my best guess is that it's fallen down into the mechanism and has perhaps bounced around and got stuck on some glue on the underside so it looks like I'm going to have to take the whole of the mechanism out so I'm going to pop this back on here for now and secure it in place because um, I may uh, well be able to just get that uh, lens pop that back in uh, with a little bit of glue and won't have to undo any of this uh, uh, cable tying uh, and hopefully that will make it work uh, once again so let's just pop these screws back in here for now just I'll just put two in there for now um, just to oops. hold that mechanism in place that's all it needs for that uh, so we've got two uh, screws on the front cabinet let's uh, go back to this view I'll move that camera out the way for a minute so we've got two screws on the front I'm taking one uh, and it looks to get this well, I'm not sure actually thinking about it yeah because the whole mechanism is held uh, in place there so we've got a ribbon cable for the thing and we've got the three cables there so we're going to have to cut that little uh, ribbon connect that little uh, cable tied just there that's the only one I think we're going to have a need just we don't need to snip that one careful not to cut any of the wires oh come on cable cutters there we go. Pop that in the bin. I'll be very surprised actually if I can find the lens, but it, I mean there are some ventilation holes underneath, so it's entirely possible that it's fallen out. Or it may just be wedged in the little corner that you just can't see because it's a clear plastic lens. Right, use my plug pullers. So I'll just slack that off so we can get the screws down the front. We don't actually need to take the front panel right off. Just take these out for the drive motors and connections. And then we've got a little ribbon cable which we pull up there. Now, actually, what we should do to protect the laser, and I'll just show you on here. On the actual ribbon of the laser, there are two little shorting links. Um, and that, if you short them out, that protects the laser against static damage. So, generally speaking, you would normally do that. I'm not going to because I don't know the age of this ribbon cable will stand a bit of soldering so I'm just going to be careful not to not to uh, inject static. I'm working on anti-static mat anyway so it should be okay. Let's put the camera up there again and do a focus. Let's do an auto focus. There we go. Lovely job. Right. So then we've got four screws holding the chassis in, one there, one at the front here, now I'm endeavouring to be hopeful about this because when I came to uh, do my first initial check for power 
um, there was no uh, sign that the back screws had ever been removed. They were still covered in uh, a lot of dust. So it's quite possible that uh, nobody's actually been in this since uh, it was first made, which would be one of the first considering its age. Now hopefully we should be able to lift this mechanism and it comes right out. There we go. So let's carefully turn it over and have a little look underneath. Let's see if we can see Mr. Objective Lens stuck on any grease anywhere. edge of a solder. It's a nice shiny bit there, it's a, it's a solder connection on a motor. thought that might be it. And I don't particularly want to have to take this mechanism apart if I can help it. I'd rather see if I can spot it and then tweak it out with tweezers if necessary. Objective lens could have fallen anywhere. And there's no ventilation holes in the bottom of this. I thought there was. So, it doesn't appear to be stuck on there. Let's have a little look down here. See if we can see it underneath the main PCB, which I cannot. And I can see something odd down there. Could have been totally mistaken, and somebody could have had it out and lost that lens while they were trying to fix it at some stage back, and they put it back in good condition. But uh, don't look like it's going to be in here. Can't see it wedged on the circuit board anywhere. to say I'll give it a good tap but we'll I think we're gonna have to just accept the fact that the objective lens is no longer here. in detail. Let's get my uh, specs on it.
Right, well, let's uh, back again with this Pioneer um, multi disc changer. Ages ago, I bid on a uh, Pioneer multi disc player um, on eBay because I had uh, a similar one in uh, where the tray had broken. And um, anyway, before it actually arrived uh, at home, um, I managed to fix the tray. It was only a little piece of plastic was, was broken. I managed to glue it back together and um, seal it. And it worked fine. So the customer had that back quick smart. And I then thought, what did I do with that one that arrived? And I just looked down on the floor and it's still there in the box. So I've got it out and unboxed it. And this is what it is. It's a This is another Pioneer, a much later model. Uh, it's a pd p 730T. It's a two disc one and one of the trays uh, was the one that was broken. And I thought, I'll have a look. So I unboxed it and as I unboxed it and moved it, it rattled. Yes. Yes. Opened it up, looked at the optical block, no lens. Gave it a little shake and it still rattled. Twisted and turned it and eventually what should fall out but a lens and I'm hoping that this lens will fit in here to replace the lens that appears to have been lost. Now as I said I found there were some posts on forums where uh, other people have come across this other engineers had uh, had the same sort of problem and um, basically they uh, did a hunt around on the deck and they managed to find the lens stuck underneath. I've had a look, I can't find it, so I'm guessing it is actually gone. Um, or if it is stuck in there somewhere, it's stuck in there. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to take this optical block out again. So I put it all back together and put it, boxed it up, put it to one side while I was going to wait and find another. Whoops. Come here, screw. That's the other thing I've got mine. There's a replacement little rubber uh, grommet. Okay, so. The lens should go, judging by that, that uh, there. Oh, it looks like it's a lens that sits very proud of it. It's a, a slightly different optical block. It's quite a big lens and it sits quite proud. a good amount of little glue around the edges of this and also around the edges of there which I think is stopping it from sitting there so we'll see if we can just if you can see you can just see there's some glue around the edges there and we've got a similar amount of glue Is there so I'm just going to see if I can just scrape that glue off which it's doing A little lug. One caught one side of this. So this might not work at all because the optical block well, there's a flat edge on there, isn't it? Good 
different optical block on the other unit. So this may not work at all. I'd rather fix this one than the other one because the other one requires a, high, a, a system to drive it. Alright, so there's a little lug, but I don't think that's significant. Let's just pop that over there for a minute. Let's see if we can clean up the blue on this edge. And I'll take this little colour off again. The other thing that used to, I remember on, on these or a similar sort of mechanism, one of the things that used to happen is this plastic here in the middle of the turntable used to split. So the turntable used to fall off and you had to get a replacement. And just down here is a little piece of plastic, it's like a U-shaped piece of plastic. And that was your turntable height guide. So you broke that out, put that underneath the turntable, pushed the other turntable on, then pulled that out. And that's how you set the height of the turntable. that will notch just, um, just a piece of green notch on also fit in there nice nicely Turning it round just to see if there's a little locating. Yeah, but no, they don't appear to be locating. So I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the glue on the other side. Which 
should hopefully hold that into position. Like so. And hopefully that will do that. I shall leave that to uh, dry and come back to that in a little while. Right, we're back with this uh, Pioneer multi-disc player and um, when I last uh, finished on this um, I'd replaced the lens uh, which I'd obtained from another uh, old Pioneer player. Um, then I thought about it, uh, this was sort of like late last night, um, and what I had failed to do before I put that lens in was to actually clean it. So uh, I actually took it back off um, and cleaned it, cleaned the optics as well, and uh, then put it all back together and sealed it and left it overnight for the nail varnish to um, uh, 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 set um, so that we had uh, the lens locked in place. Put it all back together and uh, got it going this morning and uh, then made some final adjustments. So we can see on the oscilloscope, uh, if we have a look on there, um, the uh, RF pattern there, which is the uh, the main uh, eye pattern of the oscilloscope. And uh, although I've got the service manual, I managed to find a service manual for it, um, uh, I did in fact uh, go through the, the basic setup procedures to uh, see if I can uh, adjust it. But basically what I then did is I thought, right, really and truly this is an old player, the laser could be fairly low. Uh, so in the manual, luckily, uh, it tells me what the laser power should be. Um, I just happen to have a laser power meter, um, which uh, I can show you there. Uh, and I checked the laser output power and that was correct. Um, you basically on this machine, um, you have to um, take the whole mechanism out, flip it over, put the laser power meter on it and keep pulsing it on and off to, uh, to get it to, uh, to show. Uh, but it was reading the right laser power. So put it all back together again. And then I thought, right, um, the best way really to get this to, uh, to work uh, the way I wanted it to work is to put uh, a selection of discs in, some of which are good, some of are uh, not so good, um, and see if I could get it to uh, play and adjust the, um, the focus gain and the tracking gain and then the focus and tracking offset controls. Um, keep going round and round and round, which is what I did, and eventually I got it to uh, to work. So it's now actually playing, um, we're on uh, disc six at the moment, a little bit of music there, uh, but I can now uh, go to, track to disc one, cranks up to the top, and you can see disc one uh, is reading the tab table of contents, hence the, the, the lack of uh, waveforms, and as soon as it finds the first track, um, this one is a little bit on the iffy side because it's actually got it's a test disc with um, 52 tracks on it, so the the, the track uh, pitch is actually very fine. But there, it does find it eventually, um, and it will play it. But this is a test disc, um, um, a digital test disc, uh, and it will get there eventually. But anyway, um, the main thing is music disc, which is what it's got to play. So it's this this two. Uh, which is a brand new disc, finds that, plays that straight away, as you can hear, and then disc 3, 4, 5 and 6 are discs of various age and various quality, disc 4, This 5 is probably the most problematic disc of the whole lot. Uh, the most scratched, as you can look, as you can see on the waveform there, it's really quite iffy, but it does read it eventually. Uh, at least it, it, it is trying to read it, and it will get there. If you leave it long enough, it will actually get there. Now, I could tweak it so that it just plays this disc, but then the other discs sometimes don't read. So I've, what I've tried to do is average the adjustments across all the, the discs. There we go, it's, it's nearly got there. Um, but obviously with an, an older machine, um, it's, it's going to take its time with various discs of various quality and obviously the disc quality uh, 
is going to be very stable. Now that's uh, it always starts that track when it does find it at six seconds in. Um, so it's actually right on the, the, the disc itself, the, the quality of the disc uh, there is actually very, very scratched right at the, uh, uh, the beginning. Uh, disc 6, and then go to disc 6. There you go, uh, so it's, uh, it's reading that one as well. So, uh, all in all, having replaced the optical um, lens back into the mechanism, locked it in place with uh, nail varnish, uh, which is basically just around the edge, you want to glue the lens into the, the disc, otherwise into the holder, uh, never get it out again if you have to, um, but uh, just round the outside, uh, you glue it with, um, uh, like I said, I've, I've used nail varnish, um, which is strong and will lock it, uh, but you can chip it away if necessary. So uh, that should be, uh, hopefully, a good player for the rest of its life. So anyway, there we are. Uh, we're all fixed. Um, thanks very much for watching. Hope you'll uh, uh, keep subscribing to the channel to see more videos as and when. I've got some more stuff coming in. Um, it's been few and far between because of the COVID crisis actually people come bringing stuff to me to fix um, but there's various things that they have brought me uh, which really they just weren't inter and interesting enough to make a video about uh, but uh, this one uh, I thought was brilliant uh, some other stuff that's coming in I think it will make very interesting videos anyway there we are thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time cheerio <laughs>